going on guys? We're at a good friend of ours. Uh, this is Maurice Rodriguez. He's one of the founders of the one and only Turtle Conservancy. And we're gonna do some cool stuff here today. Oh. <laughs> Starting with taking a look at some animals that he accrued for us that have come in through surrenders. Here we go. Looks a lot like Otis, doesn't it? Well, it's not. This is the same species. This is your classic Eastern box turtle, Terrapine Carolina, Carolina. But we're actually at our friend Maurice's place right now and he has gathered these turtles together for us that need homes. Much like in other videos that we've shown you guys, this is one of the most common turtles that comes in through confiscations, surrenders, rehoming. And um, well, there's quite a few of them here. If you take a look under this log, there you go. There's a bunch more of these little guys here. They seem to all be males. And it's a shame because people just keep taking these turtles out of the wild. Most of them don't make it. Some of them do. But without knowing any kind of locality data, they can't go back to the wild. Fish and Wildlife and other wildlife agencies are working hard to try to figure out how to get these animals back to the wild, if ever. But for some of them, it's a life in captivity from here on out. Look at that, 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 that guy is old. Check this out, right here, see that crack? That happened moons ago, either from a lawnmower, something stepped on him, or he was hit by a car, who knows? But they're incredibly resilient animals and they can survive a lot of these injuries on their own. So it's really, you know, it's kind of twofold there. Well, there's many more reasons why it's a bad idea to take these things out of the wild, but just seeing how much these animals can survive on their own in nature, but then when they're put in captivity, they often die for completely ridiculous reasons. Beautiful animals. We got a couple more over here. Got a couple more turtles here that Maurice gathered for us that uh, need homes. And well, this time they're pretty exotic. Rhino Clemmy's wood turtle right here. I believe that this is Incisa, subspecies Incisa, which would be the Honduran wood turtle. Beautiful little male. Look at the blue eyes on it. Another common turtle. Uh, they still legally import these things, but they do it in droves and they sell for such cheap prices that people consider them throwaway pets. And it's a shame, they're, they're really intelligent, beautiful, hardy turtles. They can't get cold like North American wood turtles can up here, but uh, they're still very hardy and can be kept outside, at least in the summer in most locations. And another Chinese box turtle. If you guys remember from the last video, there was a male that was found in North Jersey. This is a young male Chinese box turtle that was discovered just walking across a lawn in northern New Jersey. Well, here's another one that was somebody's pet and they couldn't take care of it anymore. I'm not even sure what sex it is. This thing is so shy that it won't come out. Gonna come home with us, have a naturalistic life outdoors. Amazing turtles. Also bringing this little guy home. This is a western hingeback tortoise, Conixus nagui. Now what's interesting about this animal is, if you guys look back a couple videos when we hatched the very first known USA bred Bell's hingeback tortoise, this is the exact species of hingeback that was confused to be them for so many years in herpetoculture. This was once considered Bell's hingeback, but later on through taxonomic changes and studying everything thoroughly, they figured out that they are in fact two completely different species. So this is Conixus nagui, and Jabari, the one we hatched, is Conixus Nexus Belliana. Such a cool tortoise, and this animal is a very old import, so who knows when it came in, but the person that had it had it for a very, very long time, so it's certainly not recent. And uh, he's a friendly little dude. It's cool to see one of these surviving long term because this species, like many imports, is notorious for not even making it through its first year.
wood turtle that is growing up in this enclosure. And it basically looks wild. This is what I love about what Maurice is doing here, and it's something that Casey and I are big advocates for, is setting up turtles, or any animal really, as naturalistic as possible. But so many of these species do well outdoors, if not year round, at least half the year when it's warm. And in the case of a North American wood turtle, it can live its entire life out here in Northern New Jersey. So it's just incredible. If you take a good expansive look at this pen, the only word that's really gonna to come to you is expansive. It's, it's incredible. It's, he's, there's so many nooks and crannies. There's shallow water, there's streams, there's deep water, there's ferns, there's all kinds of natural weed growth and piles of leaves everywhere and uh, hollowed out logs. I mean, the turtles literally don't have to see each other if they don't want to. And even though it's a challenge to find them, I'll say it again, that's a good thing. you guys recognize this that's a spotted turtle doing what spotted turtles do just finding those perfect little nooks and crannies on a piece of driftwood or a log where they can soak up the Sun and it doesn't take much for them to heat up because they're primarily colored black just another testament to how incredible Maurice has decorated this insane enclosure they're at home everywhere they go in here Geoclemys hamiltoni, that's the Indian spotted pond turtle. We call them the black pond turtle or the Indian spotted turtle. And if you guys remember the reel that we did where we showed you the little snow caps that we call them, we're raising some babies of these right now. And they're just absolutely insane. Look at the size of that. What would you say, it's like a foot maybe? Yeah. About a foot long? Look at that head. That could give a female terrapin a run for its money, right? <laughs> Check out this little guy. Looks like a wood turtle, right? Well, it's Japan's version. This is the Japanese wood turtle, also known as the Japanese pond turtle, Moremis japonica. Another really hardy species. This is an adult male. Check it out. Here is North America's wood turtle. Both adult males. Look at the size difference. There are some similarities there when you look at them from the top, but as soon as you flip them over or look at the legs, big differences. And even in the face, in the head. The wood turtles get that beautiful yellow iris. Incredible. Two totally different parts of the world. So you guys are so used to seeing Otis, our Eastern box turtle, and even some of the other box turtles we have that are males that are insanely colored. Well, this male right here, he's pretty typically colored. You know, he's got the brighter oranges and yellows, but look at this. This is a male that is every bit as mature as this one is, and he's like, he's so cool. He's primarily dark, and he's got like yellow flecking and spots all over him. He's just far less conspicuous than this male is, but he's still a pure male Eastern box turtle. He's also a big boy too. And what's cool is his skin is so dark that those red eyes contrast it so wonderfully. So there's an incredible variety of turtles in this amazing enclosure that Maurice has built. And uh, we've got a Blandings, a North American spotted turtle, and also an Indian spotted turtle right here. So when you look at these two, talk about two complete opposite ends of the size spectrum. This is a fully grown adult male spotted turtle from North America, and that is a fully grown female Indian spotted pond turtle. So Maurice, what what, what went into this? I mean, I know we've talked about this before, but this is, you know, a lot of us strive to make these kinds of enclosures, but this thing is just over the top. This is, uh, <laughs> I call it a work in progress. Uh, I've been building this since I moved in this house. It just keeps growing. Uh, every year I work on it, expand it a little, plant more things in it, but this is 20 years in the making. Uh, it took me 20 years to get it to where it is, and to come back in 20 years, I'm sure there'll be a lot more to see. 
It's truly incredible. But if you guys want to see more of Maurice's place, stay tuned for Sunday's video because in it we're going to show you some things you've probably never seen before. Thank you.